that everybody in here knows who your enemy is. Your enemy is the devil. He's called Lucifer. He's called uh, Satan. Natos, as they say it in rock and roll, speaking backwards. And then Aleister Crowley, the, uh, they said the worst witch the world's ever seen, um, was one that really started that back stuff, and that's why we have so much backward masking and rock and roll and thing like, and talking backwards, speaking backwards, walking backwards, saying ABCs backwards. All that stuff is, is, uh, the plan of the devil to make you go against anything that's, that's, that's of God. The way you know something's of the devil is it goes backwards from the way God said for it to go. And uh, you don't ever have to worry about it. If God said go this way and it's going that way, it's the devil. I'll guarantee you that. Uh, in John chapter 8, we see what Jesus said about the devil in verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, he told these people. And that refutes the old doctrine of the fatherhood of God and brotherhood of men and all men are children of God. All men are not children of God. These people were children of the devil. You have to be, you were born the first time spiritually a child of devil. You have to be born again to become a child of God. You're of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. You'll do just like your father. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Now watch it. The truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Notice there when it said when he speaketh a lie. It's talking about the actual devil talking. Now, this may come as a surprise to you this morning, but there are only three recorded places in the Bible where we actually have a record of the devil speaking. You'd think there'd be more than that. I would have thought there'd be more than that. Only three. And only one of them was to a human being, a normal human being. Who was it? Eve. You got it. He, he, he talked to that first woman. He had no problem since. He got our parents ruined, Adam and Eve, and this philosophy passed right on down. There's only three times it quotes the devil speaking in the Bible. Now, I know there's a place in Isaiah or in Ezekiel and those places where he, where he said that he said, I'll ascend and I'll do this and that, but there are only actual three places where he quotes him speaking to an individual. And I believe we'd do well this morning to be familiar with those three places because the devil still speaks to us through demons and circumstances and his representatives through those very same philosophy as he used on E. If we were in a war, it would do us good sometime to sit down and ex examine our enemy's artillery, their movements, and their likely course of battle. I'm sure that General Schwarzkopf and those fellows knew everything about Iraq and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait before that war ever began. And they knew Saddam Hussein, where he placed most of his warheads and they, they had it all studied out. They knew the likely course their enemy would take. You and I this morning have an enemy, the devil. We need to know what course he'll take and how he's going to work on our life. Because, ladies and gentlemen, you do realize the devil is out to destroy your life. I mean, he is literally making havoc of many millions of people's lives this morning. Young people and middle-aged people and mamas and daddies, lives are being destroyed by the work of the devil. I've never seen the beat in my life. I've never seen a time. I've never seen a time in my life when it seems like the devil is just coming through, just ripping lives apart, destroying young people at a rate that is absolutely alarming to say the least. Now, the devil is loose. 
And his words are, compare his words to his kinfolk. Somebody said one time that the devil was bound, you know, and we're spiritually reigning with Christ right now. And there is no going to be no uh, actual, literal, millennial reign. And the old country preacher said, well, if the devil's bound now, he sure do have a long chain. Because he's sure doing a lot of work, ain't it? Somebody else said, if the devil's abound now, I sure don't want to be around when he gets loose, do you? No, sir. If the devil's bound now, it sure would be a bad place to live when he ever got out. But the devil is not bound now. He's as a roaring lion, walking back and forth, seeking whom he may devour. Let's turn back and refresh our memories this morning to those first recorded words of the devil in Genesis chapter 3. Turn with me there, if you will, just a minute. And by to begin the message, I want to show you the very first time we have a record of the devil speaking to an actual human being. Now, the second time the devil spoke, he spoke to God the Father. And the third time the devil spoke, he spoke to Jesus Christ in, when he was here in the flesh. Only three times the devil spoke. And all of his philosophy will be found in those three times. The Holy Spirit chose to record only those three incidents. And the Holy Spirit shows us through the Word of God every philosophy the devil has with those three things. Now that's why the Bible is the greatest book in the world. And there is no other book like this book to teach you how to live and how to conduct your yourself in this life. Don't never take this book serious. Well, uh, <laughs> he got in me right there. Did you hear that? Don't, don't, <laughs> don't never take this book unserious. You smart Alex, you get up here and try it one Sunday. All right, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Now look here what the Bible said. Verse number 1. Now the serpent was more subtle <laughs> than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now watch it. And he said unto the woman. Here's the first thing he said. He he spoke three times. He spoke in verse 1, verse 4, and verse 5. Notice what he said in verse 1. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Number 2. Look at verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5, here he spoke again. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, brother, Eve's mistake here was even talking to the devil. He sure does a lot of damage not to talk very much, don't he? He sure messed up the human race with those three statements. Now I want to break those three statements down he made to this woman, our mother Eve, and tell you how he did for her and to her. The first thing he said, he questioned whether or not God really said what God said. The first thing the devil ever said in this Bible is, Ah, did God really say that? Now listen, you hear all these thousands and millions of people today getting up in college classrooms and high school rooms saying that you can't really depend on everything the Bible says. The Bible is a good religious book, but you can't depend on the Bible as a history book. The Bible is a good religious book, but you can't depend on the Bible as a scientific book, you know one thing for sure. They are influenced, they are affected by the devil himself. The first thing the devil ever said in this world was, God didn't really say what he said. Now I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing the devil will do to you is to try to make you doubt what God said in this book. If the devil can make you doubt what the Bible said, he has already got his 
foot in the door in your life. And it won't be long till you have no moral fiber on which to make you stand. You will have no solid footing. The Bible is our foundation. It's our footing. It's what we stand on. It's the foundation of everything we do and believe and preach. If God didn't say what this book said, we're in trouble. We have nothing to stand on. And the very first thing the devil will do will question what this book said. That's why it bothers me so bad when it seems like every time you go into a Christian bookstore, there's a new translation come out and everyone has watered it down just a little bit more. The Reader's Digest version now has taken out everything in the Bible they don't think ought to be in there. They're taking out parts of the Word of God. And brother, that's the devil just as sure as you're sitting on your seat. And I want to tell you something this morning. If a person can come over here and say, that verse isn't supposed to be in there, who's to say you can't turn over there and say, that verse isn't supposed to be in there? Who's to say you can't turn over there and say, John 3.16 is not supposed to be in there? The first thing the devil ever said to Eve, the mother of all living, is, yea, ha, God said. He questioned whether or not. How do you know God really said it? How do you know the Bible is true? Is it really a sin? Is it real? Did it really mean that? Now I know that Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of God. But did Jesus really, He didn't really mean, He really meant a gate over yonder in Jerusalem somewhere where the camel had to get down on their knee. No, He didn't. He said needle, He meant needle. You say, preacher, how, you say, I read in a commentary where it said it meant a gate out there called the needle's eye. Well, he didn't say the gate called a needle's eye, he said a needle and the eye of a needle. You say, how do you know he's talking about a real needle? Three verses later, he said, with me and it's impossible. And if it had been the gate in Jerusalem, he wouldn't have said that because that wasn't impossible. You say, but the things that are not possible with man are possible with God. You say, now brother Danny, I know the Bible says that Moses went over the Red Sea on dry ground, but actually my college professor says that it was only a sea of reeds, and it wasn't the Red Sea, it was the Reed Sea, and it was marshy grounds, and they actually, well, the girls here in our church told me not long ago their professor taught that in college last year in their so-called quote Bible class that ain't a Bible class you're teaching against the Bible and brother they were sitting there and saying that they went across on oh, only about four inches of water and like the old country preacher up there in, in the seminary took a shout and spell and the seminary professor said that and said glory to God it's a bigger miracle than I thought it was God drowned Pharaoh and all of his army in only four inches of water. Hallelujah. But the truth is, brother, it wasn't four inches of water. It was dry ground. Listen, listen, everybody in here, you're going to make a choice in your life. Either God Almighty said what that book said, or He didn't. And if He didn't, the highest thing you got is the opinion of man. And everybody's guess has as good as anybody else's where we come from. Guy come up and he's quoting scripture and some smarty will come up and they'll say, oh, you're just quoting the Bible. I believe this and that. Say, well, you're just quoting Charles Darwin. So what? They're quoting Huxley. They're they're quoting Karl Marx. They're quoting the the, uh, German philosophers. People say, oh, you're just quoting. You just say that because the Bible. Well, what's wrong with the Bible, brother? What's wrong with quoting the Bible? They're just quoting what some philosopher said. I'd rather have what God said than what a philosopher said. The devil said, no, God didn't really say that. It didn't really. it, It didn't really mean lake of fire. It actually means eternal separation from God. Ah, your foot too, brother. I know a lot of people that wouldn't mind a bit being eternally separated from God. Last thing that wants to be around God forever, they don't want to be around God now. The lake of eternal separation from God. The lake of fire means lake of fire that burns with brimstone. You better believe God meant what He said in that book right there. 
When God said everybody in here is going to die, you mark it down and see if we all don't one these days. When God said everybody will stand before judgment, He meant what He said. You're a judgment bound people this morning. You'll stand there just as sure as you live right in front of God one day that knows everything you've done, that knows every word you've ever spoke, that knows every place you've ever been. God is going to judge us one of these days. Notice the second thing the devil told Eve. He denied that there's any danger in it. He said, oh, come on now, Eve. You've been raised to believe that old mid-Victorian, pagan, heathen, old-fashioned view that if you don't do this or do that or that, that God's going to punish you. He said, uh, you shall not surely die. And all oh, he's telling people that by the multitudes today. The old lie of the devil is, go ahead and do it. God said it was wrong, but go ahead. Nothing ain't going to happen to you. You'll get by. We have a generation of people today believing that they can live any kind of lifestyle and put anything in their body they want to put in it and never have to answer or pay for it at all. The devil, the devil. When you hear people talking like, oh, it don't matter, just do your own thing. When you hear Geraldo telling about how many women he's been with, of course he's been faithful to his wife since 87, he says. When he's talking about all the other women he's been with, you know who's inspired him to say that? The devil, Satan, Lucifer is. That's right. Amen? Brother, he denied any danger in it. He said it won't hurt you. He said it won't hurt you to cheat just a little bit. He said, I ain't asking you to eat every fruit on the tree, Eve. Just one. Just one bite. You're not going to get hooked. You can quit anytime you want to. Does that sound familiar? You ever heard that philosophy before? Just try. Just one time. Just once. It won't hurt you. Come on. Take a bite. Young people hear that every week right here in McDowell County. You ever tried cocaine? No, sir. That stuff's dangerous. Oh, it won't hurt you. That's a devil talking through that person. You kids ain't got enough sense to realize it. You kids listening to me? Oh, you listen. Nod your heads over. Are you listening? That's a devil talking to have you. Have you ever been drunk? No, I tell you, I just don't leave it. Oh, good. Don't worry. You can, you don't have to get hooked. Come on. Just try it one time. That's the way you got Eve to sin. That's what ruined the human race. Just one time. Just one time. You know Lenny Bias, that great basketball player who uh, I think he was number one draft pick and going to Boston Celtics, I think, several years ago. Had a young man, had a career in front of him, could have been a millionaire. Well, was one of the most sought after our college basketball players in the United States. He tried cocaine one night. One night. He's in eternity this morning. He's dead. The devil said, come on, Lenny, celebrate. You're out of college. Just one day. Everybody does it after graduation. Everybody does it. That's another lie the devil tell you, that everybody else is doing it. I want to say everybody else ain't doing it. Hey, how many, how many people we got here under 25 that don't do no kind of drugs at all? Raise your hand in here. Raise them up there high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can put them down, kids. Now, what's that I hear about everybody's doing it? Everybody's not doing it. He denied any danger in it. He said, the devil tell you. You know, years ago they used to say, well, it really don't matter if you're married or not as long as you're in love. And then it got to the place where it said, it really don't matter if you love each other or not, as long as you're having a good time. Now it's got to the place where it really don't matter if it really, nothing really matters. Just do whatever hits you at the moment. That's the devil. Our generation hadn't yet seen the fruit of our lifestyle. Not only that, the devil suggested much advantage by it. You see that third thing he spoke to Eve? He said, Eve, you're not going to die. He told her there wasn't nothing wrong with what she was going to do. Just go ahead and put that fruit in her mouth. And then the lying devil went on to tell her, Eve, it's not only going to, uh, it's not only not a sin, you will even be better off if you'll try this fruit. 
Boy, that's nerve, isn't it? That's nerve. You see, the first thing he'll do is he'll get you wondering whether or not God really said it was wrong. And then the next thing he'll do is he'll say, God, you're not going to die. God's not going to punish you. Live it up. Party, man. Uh, have premarital sex. Mess around with drugs. Nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to get by with it. And then he goes a step further and said, you'll even be better off. If you'll do this. He said, God knows. The reason God don't want you to eat that fruit is that He knows that the day you eat it, your eyes will be open. You'll be just like Him and He don't want you to be like Him because He'd be jealous and he, you'd be better off. Come on, Eve. You owe it to yourself. Eve, you've lived for other people long enough. Don't you think it's time you've done what Eve wanted to do for a change? I'm going to liberate you, sister. You're going to, you're, you're, you've been bound up. Oh, Adam telling you what to do and God telling you what to do. Have you ever heard of ERA? And she said, yeah, my preacher said that meant Eve ruined Adam. And he said, oh, your preacher's crazy. Don't you listen to him. Don't you pay no attention to that crazy preacher. You, you just do your own thing, Eve. You just live it up. Express yourself. Try something for your beautiful body, Eve. You think and think self. Think self. Think self. Let me tell you this modern day philosophy that emphasizes self, 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 you, you, me, me, I, 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 my self-esteem, my abilities, my, my, my lifestyle, me doing my own thing. That's the devil's philosophy. They, this, this book teaches die out to self and serve Jesus Christ. This book don't teach do your own thing. This book don't teach do whatever turns you on. This book teaches do what God said and ye bought you, you're bought with a price. Ye are not your own. You want, you want me to tell you how I know the devil's getting in people? Let's see. I had a man sit right over on the couch. I'm going to use all these as out of town illustrations so I won't get so close to home. I'll give you a bunch of in town illustrations, but everybody here is kidding these somebody. I had a man sit over on my couch one day. He said, Brother Danny, I'm worried about my wife. He said, She told me she wants to separate. And he he said, I've cried. He said, Something ain't right. She's acting funny. I said, you think she's running around on you? He said, no, 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 no. I don't think, I don't think that at all. That's what, that's what they tell their self. You know, you try to get yourself to believe that. And I said, um, he said, well, let me tell you about her. I said, no, let me tell you about her. I said, she, did she try to lose a whole bunch of weight all at once? He said, yeah. I said, did she change her hairstyle and start fixing herself up more? And he said, yeah. I said, did she change the kind of music she listens to and start listening to love music and, and being oriented toward that and not listen to God? He said, yeah. I said, did she ever come in and say, I don't love you anymore? And he said, yeah. I said, did she ever come in and say that she just needs a little time alone by herself to think? He said, yeah. How'd you know that? I said, does she ever come in and say she wants to take a vacation with just her girlfriends and you not go? And he said, yes. Her words to that effect. And I started naming off. See, I got a sermon. If any of you want to hear it in private, I can give it to you sometime. I got a whole sermon on how to know if your mate is having an affair. I ain't never preached it. I'm going to one these days. Son, you talk about a burner. It's a burner. And I started clicking him all thing like that. I'll be have about five people lined up over at my door after this service is over this morning. And I said, I said, uh, I, I named off all the symptoms. See, I'm, a, I'm like a doctor. A doctor lay you down and says, "Well, you, is your throat sore? I mean, you, are you are you feeling weak in the morning? You have a, you know what he's doing? He's finding out what's wrong with you. There's certain symptoms that goes along with that stuff." And I told him, I said, uh, let me tell you something, buddy. I hate to be the bearer of heavy tidings, but she's got her eye on somebody else. You just might as well make a, wake up and open your eyes. Three weeks ago, 
There's a man come to my house. He said, Brother Danny, he said, my wife, I don't know what in the world's got into her. I said, does she tell you she don't love you anymore? He said, yep. I said, does she want to stay gone a lot? And does she... Everything that goes wrong with the house, does she find some way to blame it on you? Like it's your fault, you know, like she's trying to make you guilty? He said, yeah. I said that she started watching soap operas a lot more and, and things like that. And he said, yeah. And he started answering up. He said, how'd you know all this? And you know something? I have had the privilege of counseling with many, many Many. There's people call me all the time on the telephone from out of state. One guy from way down in Florida not long ago, he started telling me the same. And you know what? I've noticed a pattern. I've noticed a pattern that something happens to the to these ladies, and sometimes it's the men, and they say those very same things. Some of them live in Florida. Some of them live in Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, Texas, California. And they say almost verbatim the very same words. Now, what's putting that in them? You tell me. What kind of spirit is getting into these people? Eve, do your own thing. Think about yourself. Just do what you want to do. It's the very same life spirit that deceived our mother Eve in the Garden of Eden. Don't you doubt it. Don't you doubt it. Listen, when these voices come to you ladies when you're at home during the day and say, you don't love your husband no more. Remember, he said something hateful to you three weeks ago. You know how you fell in love? Brother Malone might deal with that a lot better tonight. I don't know. Do you know how you fall in love? You start thinking about all their good points. You know what ruin your marriage? Start thinking about all their bad points. They still got their good ones. Forget the bad ones and think about the good. You know what? Eve, ain't you tired of doing everything God says? Are you not tired of keeping all these rules and it's the same old thing? How about a change? You, 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 you like change, don't you? Don't you like something new once in a while? Oh, come on, try it! And he got her. Right quickly this morning. Let me hurry. Let me just give you these last two and I'll close this morning. I won't spend time on these. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 is the second time in the Bible the devil spoke. Now since for time's sake, I'll just give you these and I'll be through. Job chapter number 1. You know what he did? The sons of God there came and presented themselves, you know, before the Lord, you know, and everything. And here the devil speaks to God. Job chapter 1, look at verse number 7. Job chapter 1, verse number 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Now, you know that the devil can only be one place at a time. The devil is not omnipresent like God is. God's everywhere at the same time. Don't have to move to get there. But the devil is only one. He goes like this is planet earth right here. The devil goes. And he's got these demons working for him. He's got marrying demons that work, that hover over this church every Sunday morning. And they're coming over here like in little helicopters trying to see if somebody's wanting to get right with God. He'll put thoughts in your mind. He'll do everything in His power to keep you from hearing what I'm saying. He'll do everything in His power to cause you to have a fuss before you come. He's got multiplied millions of demons, but He can only be one place at a time. And he said from walking up and down and the devil, and the Lord asked him, did he consider my servant Job? And look what the devil said in verse 9, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him, about his house and all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed his work with his hand, or of his hand and his substance that increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. 
He said he spoke again over there, 9 to 11. He spoke in chapter 2 and verse 2 and verse 4 and said the same thing. You know what he said? This time he comes to God. And he says, God, the reason Job serves you because he's got everything a man wants. God, you just take everything he's got away. He'll cuss you. He won't serve you no more. Here's a great lesson for us to learn from the second time the devil spoke. You know why God let Job go through all his troubles? You know why God let Job... Job have all those problems. It wasn't that God had forsaken Job. It wasn't that God had uh, didn't love Job. God was showing the devil and the world that Job would stand for him no matter what happened to him. Now listen, listen, you're having problems. You preachers having burdens. You singers or any uh, parents having a lot of difficulty and you think, God, why is all this happening to me? Don't you care about me? You know what? God is using you to give the devil a black eye and show him that you'll stand for it no matter what happens to you. Amen? You know what? If you if God lets you have troubles and burden, that means God's got confidence in you that you'll stand. Amen? Alright, let's get that third one right quick. I'll, uh, I'll give you the points that I was going to have here. He had told a half truth. He did not tell what he had been doing. The devil said, I've just been walking back and forth in the earth. He'd been doing a lot more than walking back and forth. He'd been damning a few souls while he's at it. He always tells a half truth. Now, and then he said, no wonder Job serves God. I'd serve you too if you give me all that stuff you give him. That's a lie. And then the devil said, a person will do anything to keep from dying. They'll curse you to keep from dying. Skin for skin, all that a man hath, he'll give for his own flesh. And God said, no, he won't. I've got some of them that'll do just like Job's going to do in a few chapters and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And God showed him that. Now, th- thirdly, Luke chapter 4. Let's get this last one right quick. Luke chapter number 4 and look at verse number 3. Here, the devil spoke to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he was a human being, but he was the God man. God in the flesh and so he spoke to him and the devil spoke to him three times I believe it is and threw three temptations at him these correspond with the same three temptations that God the devil threw at Eve the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. All the devil talks to you and throws at you falls under one of those three categories. Notice in Luke chapter 4, the Lord had been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Verse 3, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Notice verse 6, And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Notice verse number 9. And the devil brought him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He'll give His angels charge over thee, and so forth and so on. And tempted the Lord. Notice, the devil threw three temptations at him. First of all, he said, If you're the Son of God, make this stone turn into bread. What would have been wrong with that? Somebody tell me, what would have been wrong with Jesus turning a rock into bread if He'd have wanted to? Nothing, because He was God. He he made them say, rock, he could have done it. But you know what made it wrong? It was been doing what the devil said to do.
get motive behind it. I'm going to tell you something else. Jesus never worked miracles for himself. Every miracle Jesus worked, he worked it for somebody else. When he was on the cross, he could have called 10,000 angels, but he did. He never made provision for himself. He wouldn't care. Listen, the devil didn't care about Jesus eating. He wasn't concerned that he had a stomachache. Don't you think for a second the devil had any compassion he wouldn't care if he starved to death and he wouldn't care about listen the devil is merciless you know what Iron Maiden the rock group thinks they think when they go to hell hell that they're going to rule matter of fact a lot of the rock albums say it's better to rule in hell than reign in heaven you know what them poor nuts don't realize the devil's lied to them the devil, when they get down there, they're going to burn and scream forever and ever and ever and the devil will laugh at them. He don't care about you. He don't care about you. He's ripped our generation of young people to shreds through the drug culture, the hippie revolution, the, the new morality, and so on and so forth. The devil don't care. And then the next thing you'll notice, the devil desires worship. A lot of people don't realize that. All this devil worship stuff going on nowadays, that's no accident, friend. I heard something that shocked me. North Carolina is in the top of the states for satanic worship and activity. Reckon why that is? You reckon it might be because there's more Bible-believing preachers and missionaries and work and prayer work probably comes out of North Carolina than any other state? Reckon, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying, brother, he, he hates people that worship God. He wants people to worship Him. He promises much and gives little. Just cause the... Oh, by the way, let me say something. I've not got time to get into a discourse on this statement that Jesus, the devil made to Jesus. All these things will I give you if you'll bow it down and worship. Listen, the devil shows you a lot of stuff he can't give you. I've known a million. I'm, I'm talking some, some deep truths this morning. You better listen to me. He's, to, he's deceived a many a man into leaving his wife for another woman. And boy, he made him think he's going to get this great, wonderful person. If they'd just think, they'd realize, hey, if she'd take a man away from her husband, she ain't too hot. And if she'll, if she'll steal you from your wife, what makes you think she'll be faithful to you? I've heard people, they run off somebody and say, oh, I just love them, they're good to me. I say, well, listen, they're running around with a married person, ain't they? Yeah, but I don't believe they'd ever do that to me. Well, you not? You ain't no different than that other than they stabbed in the back. You girls say, I just love him and we live together and I just love him. Yeah, he's just he's using you like a dish rag. And you're the fool for letting the devil trick you like that. You ought to slap him. Tell him to go jump in the lake till he gets right with God and wants to treat you like a decent woman and take care of you. And go buy you something and not ask for nothing in return. Amen, girls. You better say amen. I sure didn't get none of them boys out of that. Out in Oklahoma, teenagers have a group called the Covenant of the 73rd Demon. They're vandalizing churches. They, many of them groups believe that they'll have a better rule in hell if they'll take a bunch of people with them. To prove their loyalty to Satan, they're going in and desecrating churches and putting human excrement on the altar and tearing up the church and shedding blood and burnt, turning over microphones and statues and pulpits and everything like that. That's happened right here in McDowell County, part of that. I know a church less than six miles from here that happened to. Long in there. And then the last thing he told the Lord, he says, just jump off this cliff. Do something crazy. God will take care of you. Good old God, He don't care what you do. He'll take care of you. You can pull anything over His eyes. Does all these things sound like voices that you've been hearing lately? 
You turn on your television set and I'll guarantee you from now till 10 o'clock tonight you would hear these philosophies that I preach to you one right after another till you're blue in the face listening to them. Amen, brother. Amen. The devil's in, control, in charge of most of that stuff. And I believe there's somebody here this morning the devil put something in front of you that's going to ruin your life. If you don't shake yourself and wake up and realize who's doing the talking. That's the words of the devil. Let's stand by our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Please, no one leaving the building unless it's absolutely necessary. Is God speaking to your heart this morning? No talking, no one leaving the building unless it is absolutely necessary. Lord, lay this message on my heart. I'm, I'm feel, and He wanted somebody to hear it. Somebody here this morning's all tore up. Somebody here this morning, God's rang that bell in your soul. Somebody here this morning, the devil's talking to you. He'll get you in more trouble than you can ever get out of, kids. He'll get you young people in more trouble than you'll ever get out of. He'll tell you it's all right. Try it once. It's okay. Nothing bad's going to happen. You're not going to get hooked. Just live it. Do your. He's lying to you. He's lying to you. He'll tell you God ain't going to judge you. He'll tell you you're not going to hell. How about you this morning, friend? You know what the devil will tell you? He'll say, ah, oh, you don't need to take this too serious. You can get saved next Sunday. You can wait till another time. I believe there's somebody here this morning that needs to get saved. I believe there's somebody here this morning that maybe got saved years ago and you're out of the will of God. Is God speaking to you this morning? Why don't you come down here to the altar when we, when we sing and just get down on your knees and get your heart right? Why don't you do that? Can you give me one good reason why? Why would you want to serve a devil? He don't love you. He ain't good. He's not going to be good to you. He's going to ruin your life. Father, move right now. Lord, do. I've done what I could do. Now, Lord, do what I can't do. Convict hearts. Draw people to come to this altar. Tug right now at their hearts. Oh, Lord, as only the Spirit of God can do. We'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.